Okay, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce the executive director of the Hawaii Culinary Education Foundation, Haley Matchin Mathis. The foundation. <laughs> oh, real quick, I don't want to feel our thunder. The foundation is a nonprofit organization that sponsors culinary education at the high school level, at the college <laughs> level, and as well as professional culinary cooks, chefs, etc. And she will introduce our guest chef today. Thank you, John. Thank you so much. It's always one of my favorite activities is to come to your campus every semester. The Hawaii Culinary Foundation uh, has been around for 25 years, and it's nonprofit. Chef Don serves on our advisory board, and we, our whole mission and reason for doing what we do is to bring these programs to all of you because we believe very much that you're the future of Hawaii's culinary industry going forward. So our focus is on all of you, and that's why these programs are so important. Each semester we come to each campus throughout the islands, and then we also do workshops for working cooks and chefs. And we're always looking for ideas and suggestions for programs. And I do read every one of the evaluations that all of you fill out. Our guest today, I'm very excited about because I followed her career throughout the past few years as she's really just grown and blossomed into this amazing talent here in Hawaii, is Chef Beverly Luke. And Chef Beverly was um, raised in Hong Kong but came to Hawaii and um, worked on her culinary degree at Kapiolani Community College. And then she's worked at some top restaurants. One of her mentors was uh, MW Chef Mel Michelle Kari Uioka, uh, who she cites as one of her guides. And she also was a, the pastry chef at Chef Mavro uh, and Miro in Kaimaki, as well as um, working at uh, now, currently, she's working at her restaurant, Wamakazi, where she is a pastry chef and running a fantastic operation there with her husband, Jason Peel. So she's going to tell you about her background and her work in pastry. And I think you're going to get some very interesting ideas from how she approaches foods from a local perspective, but the passion that she puts into it. And she is looking for your questions and feedback throughout the program to make it even better. She's going to share with you her belief in culinary and pastry and the next generation. So turn it over now to Chef Beverly. Oh. Thank you. Wow, I love this campus. Everybody's so excited here. Am I, am I okay with the mic? Everything is okay? Okay. So um, thank you very much for having me. And thank you, Haley. Thank you, LCC. You guys are awesome. Wow, well, so many people here. A little bit overwhelmed right now. Because not too long ago, I'm like right there. But then now I'm on the other side. Uh, I don't really know how to describe this feeling, but it's just so great to see so many students that really want to get ready and get into the industry. Like, you know, my helper here, I have a helper today, Xiaoming. So uh, she got to help me a little because I a little bit um, injured my hand, unfortunately. So then she will be my hand today. But later on, when you do a demo, then I will introduce a little bit more. So let's get started. I'm actually from Hong Kong, and this is an actual picture of Hong Kong. This is where I'm from. So I was born and raised, and I, I actually forgot what year I left. So I left right after high school. And then I actually studied in Minnesota for three years, a little bit more than that. And then from that middle of nowhere, I come to another middle of nowhere in the ocean. <laughs> it's a little bit cold over there. So then uh, I went to somewhere that really warm. Um, I wasn't really going to do pastry or even cooking at first, but then um, I do more business stuff and then I got a chance to do internship at Moana Surf Rider. So I actually interned at the banquet department, but that is a turning point. So over there and like, I do, you know, food and preparation banquet stuff and then all of a sudden I, I asked myself like, hmm, the job that I'm doing, I can be replaced very easily because you're doing a lot of computer work, you're ordering stuff, you're like doing, typing the menu and stuff. And then I was just talking to myself, I was like, hmm, I need to find something that is me, that they hire me because 
I have a skill, I have something to give to the, you know, what I'm doing, the industry or something. So um, uh, then I just, long story short, actually there's something with my visa, so I actually need to switch school at that time. And then KCC is right there. So let's go give it a try, you know, see what I can do over there. So I did graduate from KCC. I do all the possible program in culinary just because I'm a little nerdy. I want to do everything. They want to see what, what is it about. So I actually do all the program over there. And then, but how thing really started, like I said, because I want to find something that is me, that is from my hand, that is unique because if I just do computer work, anybody can do computer, can, can do my job. And then I want to find something that I would not get tired of. Because, you know, if you just type computer every day, you do the same thing, then you're like, hey, I don't really want to do it. And I don't have the drive to want to study it when I was doing that job. But then once I get accepted to KCC, doing food, then I realized that all this time, like, because my family is a foodie, I'm surrounded by a lot of food related things <laughs> growing up. Like my dad is very into finding the best of whatever he's into at that moment. He would find the best tea at that time and he would find that shop, find the best ice cream and then bring it home and let's try it. So food is something that is really big in my family. And I found that I never get tired of watching TV about food or reading books about anything food related. So from that point on, then I uh, like, let's, let's see what's going to happen. Let's give it a try. And since then I never left. So I stuck in, stuck in the food industry since then. Uh, but why pastry? Because I do both, right? And this is actually some of the stuff that I do over the year in different uh, places that I work. Um, I actually do both when I was in school. So I do the hot side, the, the savory side, and the pastry side. But what really get me is the science behind it because I can find a reason why of most of the stuff that, you know, happening in the cake pan or like how a cake, like, you know, put together, why does it work and why doesn't it work? Like bread, like yeast and all this stuff is just what really like had the sparkle in my head. And then I'm very nerdy about finding out why. So even like all the ingredient that I use, I would want to know what's the difference between like a single acting baking powder versus a double acting baking powder. It's like really little thing, but all these things before, I never know it help. You know, I just thought I'm nerdy. I just go look into stuff, but then now as me said, standing here as a chef, when I have a worker come to me, I say, why, why do I have to do different brand of this product? Like, why do I have two different kinds of baking powder? What is different between this chocolate versus that one? Then all this knowledge come back. So uh, when you have a chance, like chef tell you to go find some books, it's very important to keep studying because you will never get tired of, you know, the more you know, it's just only gonna benefit you, you know? This is your skill. What you learn, you know, to do with your hand is you. That is your uniqueness that you need to find from within. Then you know when people hire you, I hire you because you have wonderful skills and I cannot replace you easily, you know, because I hire you because of you. But other than that, I'm very, very lucky to have some mentor that helped me uh, to, to shape me to who I am. And I do really want to share with you who they are. Like the first one is because uh, of my patient chef at KCC, Chef, chef Brown. Like he's very, very, very important because he's the reason why I started doing pastry, that I know this is my focus. And you know, the way he, he, he teaches class, and he show, show us stuff, like he really hold on to what he believe and he don't mind to share with you. And then the second one, like uh, Haley mentioned, I, my first ever job is MW. So I work under Michelle for a couple of years and she is the one who opened the door for me to, you know, to see, to go places, uh, to, to learn how to work in a kitchen, you know, 
this, it's very important to find that that one person open the door for you. Because if you open the wrong door and say, nope, then it's just a bye, then you're gonna go somewhere else. But she's like the best person for me at that time that, you know, show me how to, you know, work in a kitchen. Uh, you know, it's just very important. It's not the recipe, you know. You can get all the recipe from all the books, but it's not about that. You know, nowadays you have Google and you have all the stuff. You know, you can find whatever you want to learn online. It's the people that you met, the people you work for, you learn from, you learn how they work, why they successful. This is what you need to learn when you get a job. You know, it's not about the money. Of course, you need to survive, but at the same time, it's like, it's like what they can nurture you. And last but not least is Chef Jason Peel. Richard the chef who opened Namikaze, uh, who actually helped me to be who I am. And he's everywhere because he happened to be my husband. So <laughs> I cannot really run away from him. But then, other than he's my husband, that is very important, but it's because of his mentality. He taught me how to be a chef, like what it takes to be a chef. Like nowadays you can be a chef just because you have a social media because you can put your name with chef, right? So it's so easy. But from working with all these great chefs, I learned that chef is not something that you can call yourself. You know, you need to earn it. Just like respect, it's something you earn it. You work hard, you become knowledgeable so that you can share with your staff, you can train them. That's what I learned, you know, and then this is how I slowly go to that path. And I am not, I don't think I'm better than anybody. You know, I just start as a student. I learn what I can learn and I ask questions when I can. But it's just really how you put your head down, do your stuff, learn it, be knowledgeable. And then the door will open for you at the right time. So title, it doesn't really matter. I can just put, give you, you want to be a chef? Yeah, you can, I can hire you and put a chef in front of you. But do you have that, that skill set? Do you have that knowledge to train your staff? Like this is like you, you will know yourself. Right. So then like make sure when you go out, like I don't know where you at at your uh, school level now. Like maybe you're graduating, maybe you're not, but you will graduate eventually and want to look for a job. Find somewhere that, you know, it's going to be hard and you will get yelled at. But it's OK, because if, if that is the place that willing to to teach you, to give you the, the space to learn, it will be worth it at the end of the day. So it just, you need to find the right place to start, like, like the value and then everything that you really need to go eat that food, go see the restaurant, you know, kind of like see how the front of the house do, how the back of the house do. So like, it's very important. And then like Haley did mention, so I'm very lucky after Michelle, uh, I got a chance to be a chef at Mafro for the pastry program. And then I opened Miro Kanoki and I did reopen Kaimana Beach Hotel. So they, they were like an older hotel and then there's a new management come in. So I opened the hotel with the opening team and I start the pastry program over there. And then, not because it happened, it get busier and busier. I really cannot do two full-time jobs at the same time. Then uh, I go back to, I, I see it as a family business so that I go back to my own restaurant and start our own bread program and our dessert. And, Coming up, we are actually putting it together that I want to open my own big, like a big shop bakery. So then uh, to first provide for my own restaurant and all the outlet. And then uh, I do want to start program with, you know, high school and stuff and maybe you guys <laughs> to uh, take internship and then try to bring the next generation up because I was the next generation before, right? And then this is how they help me all these great people that you know i'm on their shoulder like they put me on their shoulder i want to take that and then do it for the next generation they're gonna come because we need you know people to work in the industry but we want people to have the right mentality so this is what we can share okay so so a little bit about what i do about my food this is a little bit of something that i do I really like to do something traditional, but updated. 
Because if it's a long time ago that like, you can do something with just a whisk and a wooden spoon, yes, that is what they have. But now that you have different tools and stuff, then you can uh, try to incorporate it, like why they do what they do and then how we can apply it to today's stuff. And then I love to do really bold flavor because if I give you a lemon tart, I want to taste lemon. If you give me something that's supposed to be a tiramisu, you're supposed to taste like a tiramisu, not like, eh, how come it tastes? No, 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 no. So name it right, this is very important. And then um, I love to do something that's very easy for execution, but usually heavy prep. Like you have a lot of stuff to prep ahead, but the pickup should be easy so that in like a restaurant setting, it's a little bit easier because you know, then I don't have to hire one person stand there just to play one dessert. You know, labor wise doesn't really make sense, right? So usually my dessert is ready to go, like maybe one or two touches, then go. And then uh, Henley did ask me to do a little bit about plating stuff. Like my way of plating, I like to do really simple, but I do like to have a focal point that I want to guide my guests to look at where I want them to look at. So my plate usually is not like a lot of things on it. Just like the top ones, I usually I have a point that I'm looking at. This is where I want them to look. Because I do believe my plate is a way for me to communicate with my guests. That I don't have to stand next to them. You know, you should look over there and you should eat that first and not this sauce. Like, I don't have, I'm not going to do that. And we don't really have the chance to do it standing next to a guest, right? So I want to make sure my dessert talk you know what i want the guests to know to communicate with them through the dish and the dish is kind of like like i'm painting i'm drawing is is the the product that i want to present to you and i hope you enjoyed it the way that i anticipated and it should come in like like flavor wise if you name it certain ways should kind of like not that you cannot break walls you should think outside of the box but at the same time it should come communicate properly with you know the wording how you want to describe it and all this stuff like this is what i believe in when i create any desserts so um it's a little demo today that i gonna show you one of the little pastry that i do for actually catering or like a little bit event stuff that we would do it's a mandolin but i make it a little bit special because i did incorporate some of the local ingredients and like like little things that make it a little bit different. So I will have my hand help me. So this is Sha. Thank you so much for being my hand. So I was just like, oh, I'm a lady too. <laughs> you guys are awesome. I love you guys are small. It's like not like sleeping or something. So um, I will just talk and then um, she will go through the recipe. And you should have all the recipe that I printed with the pad out already. But the the uh, recipe is actually right there. But there's a little mistake over there. I'm so sorry. The lemon is half a lemon instead of two lemon for that recipe. Sorry. But then uh, your handout should be correct. So let's put the, so we're gonna start the butter course. So it's a very simple recipe. This is something really classic and I bet you will do it maybe like in your class or maybe even at home or something. But then um, the reason why I picked this is because something very simple doesn't mean that, you know, it's boring. Like, what is your intention to do something, you know, will add value to your products? Like, I do this, this actually is a recipe, I only do it for this class. I don't, when I bring it to event, it's like different flavor. But I create this for this class because I want to showcase some of the products that we actually use in the restaurant as well. So in this recipe, we do, is it on? Yeah. I use uh, local honey. So this little small one is like from a guest actually. There's a guest come to eat and then uh, they bring us honey. I actually have multiple different farm honey in a restaurant, which I enjoy using it. Cause honey to me is actually seasonal because there's different flower throughout the, the year. Instead of, you know, the generic one that you just pull out, they always taste the same. But when you get local honey, when you have like small little farm to it, they actually taste different. They look different. The color is different. You know, some are runnier, some are thicker, you know. By using products like that, 
you understand your season a little bit more. So that really matters to me when I can do feature some local stuff. And I do you Maya Lemon. So these are the Maya Lemon that we use at uh, the restaurant as well. And one thing a little bit special, you can see I actually use Ulu flour. This is actually something we, we use in our restaurant. Some of the dishes that we use Ulu flour, it's local as well. So it gives a little bit of a savory like a fragrance when you bake it. And then I didn't put a lot for this one because I don't want to take away from the lemon and I don't want to take away from the tea. But sometimes if you incorporate into your baked goods, when you bake it, you can actually smell it uh, over your kitchen. So I, I really like to use ulu flour in like cookies and stuff. It really helps. But um, yeah, so, so we're melting the butter. So we just need to melt it. We're not bringing it to boil or anything. We just want to melt it completely and keep it on the side, keep it warm. Uh, you can actually start the egg right now. So while it's melting, which is perfect, we can see it on the screen. It's awesome. It's not going to be too hot. <laughs> so then we're going to crack the two eggs in a bowl. And then this is in your recipe, they're set all separate, but I did weigh the sugar, the salt, and the lemon zest in the same container. Just a little notes about setting citrus. I never set anything in an empty bowl unless I'm using that bowl because the reason why you're setting it is because of the oil. If you set it somewhere and then just transfer it, you're wasting all the oil in the container, especially in like plastic container, right? So you don't want that. So Neither I will set it directly to the batter or I will set it in sugar or some sort of oil so that it will capture all the fragrance. So, you know, might as well just put it in. But here, to, because I don't want to like do so much like extra stuff. So that's why I set it in the sugar ahead of time, which it will absorb all the beautiful scents from that. You can add all the beans. So we add it in and then we just kind of whisk it in until it's all incorporated. For this recipe, you basically just need a bowl and a whisk. The spatula is more like to just put it back into the sub, uh, container later on. So when it's all incorporated, it doesn't need to be whipped or anything. If you make a really big batch, of course you can use a machine, but here we just make a very small recipe. So then um, we just do it by hand. And then from there we can have the, other, the dry one. So this dry, I already sipped it a little bit ahead of time with the baking powder and I did add the tea inside already. So I have tea and I grind it up. I actually sifted a little bit to get the big one out, grind it again, and then I have the ground tea and then put it in. So this one I use Earl Grey. Earl Grey just go really well with citrus. So I, I choose that. You can use whatever you want, like in you, you like. I use um, Hojicha before. I use uh, Gamacha before. So I, same thing, I just add, or sometimes I steep it in whatever liquid I have too, but I do like to put the whole leaf inside whenever I can. So this one, you really need to make sure all the dry is incorporated with the egg before you add the butter and the stuff inside. So uh, here I did measure the vanilla with the cream, it's just so that it's a little bit easier and instead of have like two drop of vanilla in a container, uh, but usually I will put the vanilla in the egg when I put it together so that it is like incorporate and then it's just a little bit easier. So for this, just for the record, this one doesn't have ulu flour because I use all the ulu flour in the restaurant when I make the big one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, but when you do it, if you don't have it, you just sub it with the uh, AP with uh, whatever you have at, at home. It's so melted. So when you melt the butter, the reason why you don't want it to be boiling and really hot, because like I just mentioned, right, baking powder we use. And baking powder, there's double action, single action. Usually what you get is double action. Why is it double action? It's because it will react with liquid and it will react with temperature. When it's hot, then it will give out all those bubbles, right? So you don't want to pull the really hot butter in it to have it all reacted now, but then when you bake it, is all neutralized already so you don't want that that's why you want it to be warm but not hot the reason why you want it warm is because this might be a little bit cold right 
even though my egg is room temperature, but you put it, if you put cold butter in it, it's just gonna solidify it. Then you cannot emulsify your batter properly. So, it's your butter. Yeah. I think it's good. So now, because this is just wood, like you see, she turned it off when it still have a little chunk earlier. So with the residual heat, it will melt the rest of them without being too hot. So now you can put it in. Yeah, so all the butter can go in. And then now you would want it to be properly emulsify into the batter instead of, you know, like little streak of it because this is the only time that you can actually mix it into the batter and emulsify it. You do have eggs in inside, right? So egg yolk is a very great emulsifier so that it will help to bring everything together. It takes a little bit, but it will come together. This room is actually really cold, so the butter will cool down a lot faster than when I make it in the kitchen. So when you mix stuff, you, you have to consider all this or this factor. So like that's why I love pastry because everything matters. You know, the room temperature matter, whatever the temperature of your ingredients matter, and your, you know, even your oven temperature matter, right? Everything matters and that is what mattered to me and I loved it because it's not like, hey, it's just okay, just leave it there and it will, it will happen. So one time a patient chef actually tell me, which is like, I still share with my staff every time when I have a new staff, Pastry is so different be because you actually need to know your goal before you even start. Not like you cooking and you adjust it like as you go. Like you cannot really adjust anything after you put it in the oven. Like you forgot the baking powder. Oh, I forgot it. Take it back out and then put it back in and say, no, it's not going to work. So for pastry, you need to plan. You need to know what you need to do before you even do it. So actually it really helped with your time management, with your like planning of work. So even if you work savory, I highly recommend you train with pastry because it really helps when you actually do the hot side. Then now you can actually add the cream once the batter is um, properly emulsified. Yeah. So I add the cream at the end. Uh, for most of my recipe like this, like kind of like a little cake batter, because sometimes I do add like lemon juice and stuff. I do not want to curdle the cream. So if I have like a little bit of dairy like that, then I will make sure I will not affect it. If I put it, let's say if I have lemon juice in the in the mix and I have to put the cream together without mixing it uh, quick enough, then it might curdle and then it's just not gonna work out. Once it's all properly, you don't see like a shiny butter or like, you know, like dry flour. And this batter is actually done. But then you don't bake mandolin when the batter is freshly done. You can, it will be like a butter cake, but mandolin is known for its little hum. So if you want a little hum, one of the common trick that I used to is to bake it with a hot oven, but a cold batter. So it will cook the outside first, and then it is cooked and then it will burst open in the middle. So this is how the hum happened. You know, but if you fail, it's okay, you can still eat it. It's just, it's still delicious. You just don't tell people that it's a mandolin. <laughs> or you can cook it in the muffin tin or something. It's fine. So from, from here, we will put it in, I put it in a deli, you can put it in whatever container you want. Usually I keep it overnight in the fridge. But if you don't, have overnight that long, at least two to four hours. Like I do four hours at least if I can. Some I think some recipe call for like an hour or two. But to me it do more than just to cool down the batter. It do a couple more things. First is to have the flavor get all mature inside. Because you have this lemon zest, you have those tea, you know, it takes time to come out, you know, that flavor. The oil gonna zip into the zest and then the tea gonna infuse your batter. So overnight after that it all come together, become like one. Instead of right now, they are all kind of like gathered around. And it does help the flour that we add to it to absorb all the moisture so that it become like one uniform batter. And then last, of course, is because we want to cool it down. It will get a little thicker because the butter is solidified. Uh, many uh, 
recipe or chef like to do piping back. Like if you want to use a piping back, then like, you want to take it out and stir it a little bit so it softens a little bit. Because otherwise it's really hard to pipe. Uh, I usually just use a portion scoop. So what I do for today, thank you, Shah. So, <laughs> by the way, she's actually one of the very beginning, like my, my hire, and she actually worked with me right after, yeah, right after KCC. So she come to me right after she graduate. Yeah, I take her like since then, unfortunately. <laughs> but then uh, she worked with me in the hotel with no experience at all. She only do internship. So it's a big headache at the beginning. But then after a while, now she's with me at Nami Kaze. Um, I'm so glad I have her. Like you never know what ones can do when they, but when they hit it, then it's like, wow. You know, I can see when she first started, doesn't know anything. And then now it's like, oh, I can just leave her to the station. I don't have to worry about it. So this is one of the most rewarding things to me as a chef. Like it's not really the title or anything, but to see people grow is something that you cannot beat that when you, when you have somebody like that. And just like me and her, just like you guys, we were right there. And then now we're on this side. And then, um, so this can go away. Uh, just a little note for that recipe. I did use a mold like this. I mean, you can get it anywhere online, Amazon. But then this one, I put a purple scoop. This is about 30 gram each. This is what I use. Uh, I do have different sizes, like these little baby ones and the silicone kind too. So there are many, many kinds. But if you want to get the very traditional look with the all brown outside and a little hump right in the middle, uh, this one will give you the easiest, uh, easiest uh, success, success from that. Like for the silicone, because plastic is not a good, like silicone is not so good for like heat conducting. So the outside will be a little pale, but if you do like a chocolate mandolin or something, you won't really see the color, then it's fine. It will still come out, but the hum is not gonna be like in the middle, like it will more be like uniform, like a little mountain. So it's up to you, whatever you want, but the baking temperature, might, you might need to adjust it. You actually need to adjust it for a different oven. So I bake this in the rational combi oven. So if you do like a regular, you know, the classic kind, you might need to test it a little bit before you do. Okay, so, I think we can do the tasting while I go for the second part of my little presentation. And can I go back to the uh, slideshow, please? Thank you, Chef. So while you're having a little taste of this mandolin, I do want to share with you about using local products and working with local business. Shh, yeah, chef message, shh. You guys listen to it. Little side, side effect, he actually is my teacher. He's my first lab class teacher. He actually taught my fundamental at KCC. Wow. How old is he? <laughs> 20. <laughs> it's a question, okay, it's a question. Yeah, how, yeah, how old do you look? Anyway, so. That's why I make it even more special to come here to share with you guys because, you know, this is my first teacher when I was right there. And then now I bring my first, you know, employee that I bought from, you know, like just graduate and start working with me. So it's just really fascinating for what, you know, like how things go. And I never thought I would be here. So a little notes about the mandolin you're eating. Actually, I make uh, the mandolin and I brush it with a little glaze that make with just powdered sugar, sift it, with a little bit of lemon juice. And then uh, I make a little preserve inside. That is uh, Maya lemon, Earl Grey, with a green apple actually. So it's a preserve with a little chunky apple inside to bring out a little bit more of the flavor. Uh, so usually, mandolin is something that you eat it fresh. But when I go to an event, I'm not gonna bring an oven with me and bake it fresh for the guests. So that's why I kind of adjust the recipe a little bit, um, and put a glaze and a little preserve in it so that it will still stay pretty moist after a while. But this is a really good recipe if you make it. 
maybe night at night, right? Wake up in the morning, make the coffee, put it in the oven. When it's ready, your coffee is ready. So you will have breakfast like fresh from the oven or like little uh, afternoon tea. So it's very like easy to make and it's something that you can actually eat it every day. I think like with a coffee, it's easy to make. So while you're eating it, I do want to talk about a little bit how we incorporate local and like, like this level, like little pastry or in the restaurant. As you know, I'm not from here. So my, my way of looking at local is a little bit different, I think. So I don't use local just because they are local business, but to me, I see it as good people helping good people, you know? Then you can bring a better products together and provide better service. So to me, it, it doesn't make sense, right? It's, it's not because, oh, you local, I have to use it, but I don't know how, but I just gonna bring something in, you know, but gonna waste it. No, 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 but you do it because you know it matches your brand, it matches what you believe in. And to me, it's the person who run the business that, you know, I believe in. It's a relationship that we build with our farmers, with the little business that, you know, we come across. And then how we can make this little industry or this island better. You know, this is, this is more than just use one lemon, one mango. You know, we actually partner with a couple farms and one of the one that we we use a lot more is uh, Aliki, Aliki Acres. So we basically buy out their farm as much as we can. Actually, I met them this morning. They deliver and they, uh, you always buy so much. Is it okay? Is it stressful? Because I don't know what you're going to do with it. And I just, I don't know what I got to do with it either, but we will figure it out. The reason why I like this kind of relationship is because if I buy the products that they grow, not just two banana or two lemon, but buy all the crops and after that, they can grow something fun. They can experience more stuff and then you will keep them going instead of just, you know, you buy two chili pepper. What am I going to do with the other two cases? But when we buy it, we brainstorm, we bring out like special and stuff so that we can use it. And then it's, it's really about serving our local community. So I'm very, very glad that we get, you know, recognition in the restaurant and stuff. But the one thing that I'm really proud of the, the restaurant and our team is because we are a local favorite before we became a tourist spot because we feed the local, we feed the people, the family in our neighborhood first before people from outside because this is what it is about Hawaii is really small um, but we have a lot to offer people just need to see it but we have to do it together so that people can see it a little bit more and then just a little bit like I know I'm a little real long but a little bit on my my goal I would say and what I believe in uh, that I really want to do like from now on to, you know, I don't know how long I will be in this industry is to bridge the gap. Cause the, the couple of years I work in the industry, there's gaps everywhere. The front and the back, you know, people said they always fight. You know, why they have to fight? Because this doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be the same team, but it does happen everywhere. We don't want that to happen. So we take the step up to, you know, communicate with each other communicate with each server, not only the manager, but you know, the chef, you know, we all kind of like communicate so that we know we can fix something if something is wrong. And the chef to the cooks or like me to bakers and stuff like, I don't have to be high up there because you know, if I don't have my bakers, my cook, I'm nothing. You know, I cannot run a restaurant by myself. I can work seven days a week, but what's the point? You know, you have to bring a team together. That's why we're like continuously try to find good people <laughs> to, to join the team. Like we really need to find like-minded people and then put them together so that we can create a better environment for everybody to work. And of course the kitchen and the guests, like how we can communicate with the guests, you know, like what we're doing, why we do this and how we're gonna, you know, provide what they're looking for. But at the same time, we have to serve the guests like 
how we want them to experience, you know, what we can offer. And then of course the restaurant and the community, you know, and even just, just us to you guys, this, you guys are part of the community. What can we do to help you to have a better path or like to, to a better future together? And then of course, like our standard and then health inspection and all the health department, how can we educate everybody just from a restaurant itself that, you know, it's very important to keep your food is at an appropriate temperature and everything. This is something that we all should know because it's the health of our guests, you know, it's very important. You don't want to kill somebody. Whereas in KCC, one of the instructors said, you know, we are the, the industry that can kill people the easiest because you just, Allergy, you have not allergy, I'm just going to put it inside. You know, you can eat it, eat it, eat it, and then you get it, and then you die. But what are you going to do? You know, well, I'll just put one nut inside. You know, I just put one flower for your gluten. No, but you have to have the knowledge to understand what to do with that. And then one very last thing is, you know, I'm really proud that you guys are in school, that are willing to learn. I don't know if you are forced to be here, but it's okay. <laughs> You are here, so I'm really happy. Just joking. But you have all this book there that, you know, this, this is so awesome that you have a chance to, you know, have all this access to, to books, to knowledge, you know. The more you learn, the more you know you don't know, you know. That's why the more stuff that you need to keep, you need to keep learning, keep reading, keep sharing with people. Like, you can only teach when you have enough inside to share with other people. You can, you can talk what you talk, but if you cannot do it, then yeah. You tell me to wash dishes, but you just leave all the dishes there. I say, no, thank you. It's not going to happen. You know, so it's just a little, little sharing with you today. It's like a little, yeah, I hope my time is okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, so the restaurant is at Pier 38, uh, the old uncle location, I think. This most of the people understand where it is. So we're at the pier. We're kind of, you know, by the fish auction area. So we're right there. So we did put up the sign. And one thing I do want to point out of this slide is this picture is one of my favorite picture of all the little picture at the very beginning. This is actually Chef Peel holding the sign that we built at home. We actually make the sign that if you open the door of the restaurant, the first thing you see is this sign. We buy wood from, we use Hawaii. This is all we claim wood that people don't want. Actually, in fact, all the table in the restaurant were built in my house. I still have all those dust in the garage. <laughs> Never gonna go away. So, <laughs> but what I like about this is it almost reminds me, having a restaurant, being a chef, it's not big, just, it's not about you out there. You go wash dishes, you go make this dish, I'm gonna take a break. It's to take all the people, this family on your shoulder, carry it with you. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, this is what it meant to own a restaurant, to be a chef, to be a real chef, to nurture the next generation. It doesn't matter you don't have experience now because everybody starts somewhere. But you need to really ask yourself what you wanna do and if you know what you want to do, or kind of, you know, you're not really going to figure out now. But keep doing it. Just drill down, lower head, just do it. You know, then you will find your way. Everybody have your own path. It will just happen, you know, if you put your time in it. So I think this is time that we can do a little question time. Yeah, if we well, can. Well, yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, let's see if hard work pays off, right? So Chef Peel, Chef Bev on uh, Namikaze, you guys know where it is now, but um, or you knew already or eaten there. I hope um, so. <laughs> uh, James Beard, uh, semifinalist for best restaurant, best new restaurant in the U.S. Hard work pays off. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Congratulations. <laughs> and, then, and then that's just the beginning. All right, uh, let's open in, um, I'm gonna, anyone has questions, I'll pick your hands, raise your hand, and then I'll repeat the question so Chef Bev can hear it. So anyone? Please. What, uh, something. Okay, right in front here. 
So if I go to Namikaze, what dish do you recommend to try? Because I haven't been there yet. Oh my okay. god. Okay. Uh, if I go to Namikaze, <laughs> what's the best dish that you that Chef Bev recommends to try? Just a sidetrack. I actually don't eat a lot of sweet, so I'm not gonna recommend my dessert. I actually. <laughs> It's just, you know, a bias, right? So, but in Namikaze, we have a lot of dishes with inspiration from random places. One of the things that people really like is uh, the shrimp waffle that we have. So it's actually a combination of what we eat at home. So the waffle batter is what people make at home for breakfast, you know, for me and for his son. And then the walnut stream is what I always order in a Chinese restaurant. So like when we are developing the menu, it's like, oh, why don't we just put it together instead of the chicken because we like both of them and we cannot serve walnut chicken in our restaurant. So then we just put it together and it end up became um, like a favorite for our guests. So I do really, really like it uh, with like a white soy maple that we mix together. So it's something that I really enjoy. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Question? I might no? that bold. Chanel? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for new students going in this program, like what advice would you give them with your experience going through the culinary arts program? Uh, what advice would you give all of us if we're in our, well, we're in our culinary program. What advice <laughs> would you give us, Beth? <laughs> <laughs> so for, for new students, there's so much for you to learn. And there's no point for you to say, I know that. I know that. You know, I, I will... Thing you should think you're like a blank piece of paper to soak up all the knowledge, you know? And then, you know, just, just be humble and then see what, what you can learn from each other. Not only from your instructor, because you're new and you don't know anybody, right? And then you come into class, most of them are lab classes. You need to learn how to work with people. That is very, very, very important because I tell you now and I will tell you forever the same thing. You will always work with people that you don't like. Well, you will always bump into people that you say, why am I working with them? Like, you're not doing your job, you know. But it doesn't matter. First of all, because you cannot change that. You know, that's your classmate, that's your teammate. But people skill is actually more important than ever. Then you, you just don't know how important it is. Because especially when you're a chef, you will hire people that you might not really like them, but you do need them. How do you work with them so that we can go to the same goal? And that start from little things like your group projects, your little things that how do you work with each other? That person might not have done something wrong to you. It's just because you have a different style of doing your stuff. So from my experience at like hiring people in the kitchen, I do not believe in bad workers and bad like chef or work um, bosses. Usually it's mismatch. My style of teaching is not your style of learning. So if I cannot correct it or like kind of guide it back to a right path, then maybe I need to help you to find a different mentor, which I'm fine with it. And then it shouldn't be something that's so personal. It's just not about it. It's not that big of a deal, you know? Like, you know, you really have to um, figure it out you know, as you go, they just need to learn to see a different side, like a different angle. You know, it's very important people's skills if you can. Okay, any more questions? So, oh, one. Uh, so, uh, like throughout your whole journey from the beginning all the way to like, where you are now, mm -hmm. what was the biggest obstacle you had and what did you do and like what was your mindset to overcome the obstacle? Oh, uh, boy, through your journey, what was your biggest obstacle and what'd you do about it, Beth? <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get over that obstacle? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> There's actually a lot. Like, people is one thing, right? Uh, I mean, different stages are different things. I think if you're talking about right now as a chef, of course, it's like to come up with menu at the same time to train people. But then the biggest thing is I always ask myself, at that multiple point of time, do I have enough to give? Do I have enough to share? Like, as a chef, I need to be knowledgeable enough to teach, to share, and to train. So, like, one thing that I will struggle is like, oh, am I updating myself enough? Am I 
like putting enough stuff in my, you know, my, my bank so that, you know, I can give. So I do struggle a little bit at the beginning because, you know, when, when you first start being a chef, you, you don't really know what to do. I don't really have a lot of staff at that time, but I do need to keep my stuff, you know, like to myself. Like I prep for myself, I do like I play everything. But that time you, you would still ask, like, do I have enough to put on a plate that, that match my title? I get over to be a chef. Doesn't mean that, you know, I have enough. You know, sometimes, you know, many people over many position, right? So to keep learning, to keep sharing, that's why it's so important to me is like this keep me on track. Like I will keep track on what is, what is new now, but at the same time, I don't want to be a trend. So one thing I learned from Chef Michelle that I know she learned it from uh, Chef Thomas Keller. One thing that she, she taught me is don't be a trend because a trend come and go. It has a beginning and an end. Be a motivation to motivate people, to inspire people. Because it's like wave, you keep going. You will never stop. You don't want to trap yourself in a trend that you know, when the trend gone, then you're gone. A chef for a trend doesn't do anything, you know? So that's why it's very, very important in that sense. Time for one, one last question. Oh, Terry. Okay. If you could only make her eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be in one? Oh, if you could, okay. If you could make her eat one thing for the rest of your life, stuck on a lonely island by yourself. No, no, sorry. Yeah. What would it be? For me, myself, that I can only have one thing to eat. Why you do that to me? <laughs> I mean, it's not going to be practical, but I do really love bacon. Right? Cannot give that up. It's so important. And I will love pork a lot. Yeah. So yeah, bacon is very really important. Is this too short? I can I can show you that if I do. <laughs> Okay. All right, well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chef Bev. Thank, Thank you for you. having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.